Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in this week's video, we are going to repair any leaks we have in the sliding rail of this particular doghouse. We're also going to design and lay out our new solid lifeline handrails and stanchion locations. If you're new to our channel, my wife and I do videos every single week about our lifestyle, living aboard and refitting our classic sailboat. If that's the type of content you think you'd enjoy, do us a favor, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new content. If you think others might enjoy it, please do share it, post it on social media, and give it a thumbs up. Thanks everybody. Let's get to the video. Good morning everybody. In last week's video, you might have noticed we went ahead and fared the underside of the coach house roof where we had put on the new core. We also cleaned off the deck and took care of a few small odd jobs like removing tape and cleaning up around the ports. The nice thing is, the work is really continuing here on the boat, and in this week's video, what we're going to do is lay out and design sort of our um, solid handrails and stanchions. And I'll show you in a minute where I think we have a bit of an interesting uh, area here. Um, there's quite a few things to think about here, and one of them happens to be, do we take advantage of the fact that we're designing something new and essentially make the solid handrail follow the contour of the front of the boat a little bit more? With a lifeline, the lifeline essentially just connects to uh, the first stanchion and then over to the bow pulpit. In our, ch in our case, we have the opportunity to modify that if we want. There's an interesting thing that's uh, a little unique here, and I'll show you up here in a moment what that looks like. Um, we'll see if we can take a piece of wood or a, you know, a piece of PVC and just hold it to visually give the indication of what we're trying to figure out. Um, a couple of things. One, on the stays themselves, I think that the handrail is going to go on the outside of the lower stays and on the inside of the upper stays, and I'll show you why. It's just because of the geometry of the cable stays. You can kind of see how the rail, you know, the handrail at about the right height is going to go on the inside of these shrouds and on the outside of these shrouds, which I think makes perfect sense. It'll, it'll go right around the, um, it'll follow the curve, if I hold it right over top, of the actual tow rail, which makes sense. Uh, that other piece is how much room will there be to walk from the anchor well out onto the bowsprit and, and the bow pulpit if we have the lifeline completely follow the contour of the boat. There might not be a lot of room to sort of squeeze your body between the, uh, uh, the inner jib, uh, inner jib sheet or inner stay, um, and the sail pack and the actual rail. So we'll take a look at that and we'll make sure that whatever we design um, not only looks good but also is functional. We want to make sure that we have plenty of room to maneuver and, and work on the anchor or snubber lines as well as get out on the bowsprit if we need to for any reason. Hope you enjoy this week's video. Okay, the task at hand today is to determine how we want the layout of the handrails. What we're thinking is because we have the new yacht steps that uh, automatically go up and down with the tide, we believe we want to make this uh, gate entry a little wider. It was 18 inches before, we think we want to go to 24. Once that's determined, then we can go ahead and do the math essentially from this stanchion to the forward stanchion and then sort of divide it out and see how many stanchions we actually want down there. So that's going to be the next step. We're going to measure that distance of the opening, measure the entire tow rail as we go along here, and then sort of do the math to figure out the spacing around these. We'll show you the uh, area around the stays here in just a second. All right, so figure out, you think in our first stanchion you want to go like right here, right? Okay. So I think when we do that, if we go right here, I'm going to have him do a solid aluminum, a solid stainless down to that rather than the cable like this. Because if we do that, then we shouldn't need that angled piece with it. You know what I mean? Break me off a piece of tape and we'll mark this. We're talking about like right here, right? Perfect. Yeah, then let's do about 25. So to about here. All right, let me show you what I was um, running into up here that I said we need to sort of think about. All right, so here's what I was talking about. So the first stanchion is going to go right about where that red tape is or so. Like, we can determine where, but that probably makes sense. You know, right at the edge of the anchor well. Okay, but if we did that, you hold that at about where you're thinking it would be, about right about your waistline. All right, so that's going to go about like here, hold it out over the tow rail. Actually, that might not be too bad. I'm going to have him curve it in a little bit, just a little bit. Just but essentially, I want it to curve. Can you, can you see this? I want him to curve up to about here and then follow that stay up to there. So we have an opportunity to allow our railing, the new railing we're going to put on, to follow the curve of the boat as opposed to the way the lines would go, which would kind of go right up to the edge of the bow pulpit. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have the um, the handrail follow the curve of the hull 
until it gets right above this stay right here for the uh, bow pulpit. And then we'll have it kind of go right up to there and follow over the top of it. That should give us enough room to get around the inner forestay when that solid rail is there. So that's about the angle it would be right there. I think so. Let's think about if we're doing work right here. If we need to lean over for the anchor snubber, it could be in the way a little bit, but I guess we could get ourselves in there and do it. It shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. So seven from this side of the gate is what was on it before. Twenty-five feet nine inches. Bear with me. So if I've done my math correctly, essentially what I have are six segments, right? So one segment, two, three, four, five, six. Six spans between the first and the last stanchion of 309 inches. So I divide my span by, by six, I get 51 and a half inches span for each one. That should be what we're running into here. So this distance is 51.5 inches. And this distance will be the same and repeat on through. So let's go measure and mark it, see how it looks on the boat. You can see the blue tape where we've marked each of these. These first two pieces of blue tape right here are actually going to be where the, um, the gate is, the actual boarding gate. And then, as I mentioned, every 51.5 inches, we have another piece of blue tape. And that blue tape represents the location for the stanchion. You'll notice that this one right here, um, it was actually 51 and a half inches was right over the edge of the, the scupper. So we just moved it back a tad um, and split the difference. So some of these will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 49 and a half and some will be around 51 and a half. But you can see we have one at each spot. You can also see these white plastic wedges right here. And these are all of the wedges that had to be made to uh, go along that angle that's right there on the uh, on the edge of the inside of the gunnel. Um, that way the stanchion remains perfectly vertical. As we do this solid lifeline, essentially what it's going to be is a 36 inch tall stanchion with a solid um, a stainless steel tube on top. It's all 316 stainless. Um, what's interesting is we are going to do two lifelines below it. So essentially at one foot, two foot height, and then at the third foot on top is going to be the solid rail. And to make this really look good, what the fabricator is doing is he's drilling a hole through each stanchion. He's putting a small piece of tube, stainless steel tubing through it. He's then welding that tube to the inside of it so that water doesn't get down the inner part of it. And it has a nice solid area for a piece of cable to go through and not chafe along a raw edge of the vertical stanchion. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, I, in maybe next week's video, I'll see if I can get some, um, some footage or pictures of those. Uh, he's got them all in his shop. He's been welding them, drilling holes. And, and kind of polishing them up as he goes, but, uh, but they're not out here on the boat right now. So with the stanchions all lined up and measured out, it's time to really focus on this companionway. The good news is we learned a lot when we removed the companionway up front. So what we learned is uh, these brass strips right here can be removed. Once all the screws are out, they can be slid forward. So we're going to go ahead and do that and get all these things pulled out and then essentially just lift this companionway up and off so that we can get these rails out of here and rebed. So we're working on the forward doghouse uh, companionway slide and Deb is um, removing the screws from the rails themselves. I have a feeling they're not bedded well, so we're about to find out. As you can see, once the sealant broke loose, we were able to remove the rails up from the boat itself. And then it was just a matter of repeating the same process on the starboard side of the boat. Sadly, Deb had a bit of an accident as she was prying the rail off the boat. All right, so the rails are off. Smile, baby. And they're good and clean. Deb's got them all scraped nice and clean, all the sealant off of them, and uh, yeah, it looks good. Now it's just a matter of... Soap, water, and acetone. <laughs> That's right. Soap, water, and acetone. She's right. 
so now we're going to go ahead and show you the bottom of the rails. Um, we still have some work to do to kind of clean up these. Uh, they're not horrible. You can see probably why it leaked. You have very little sealant actually on these. So that's a problem. We'll get those cleaned up as well. What are we doing? While Deb's doing all the sanding, I've been working on this uh, doghouse up here. So where the fiberglass skin around the doghouse came up, right at the base of it, there was a small gap. So I wanted to go ahead and repair that as well. So what we've done is um, I've taken, um, I've essentially taken the uh, the opening and I put some thickened epoxy in a Ziploc bag, cut the corner of it. Somebody gave me that tip a couple of times on different YouTube videos. I've tried it in the past. I've struggled a little bit with getting a good smooth bead. I think it's because I actually didn't have it quite thick enough. Um, I made this a little bit thicker, but still thin enough that it would droop down in there because I wanted it to fill the void completely. So let me kind of show you what we have here. Um, I've got a couple of clamps on it just to hold it tight. Once that thickens and holds together, then I will uh, fill in the gap with a little bit of fairing, uh, uh, epoxy thickened with fairing compound and sand it smooth. So as we move up here, let me kind of show you what it is we have that you can see here that small gap where the blue tape is and the wooden frame. I went ahead and just put a little bit of thickened epoxy right in there and just held it clamp, have it clamped there to get it to adhere. You know, it's working well. And as I do that, Deb continues to sit in the shade over here, sanding, very helpful. It's been good, we've been making a lot of progress today. You know, we got up this morning, I think we got up at 5.15, we were out of the house by 5.40. Uh, we were down here, you know, 6.35 or something like that. Um, and by getting started that early, we ran to West Marine to get the parts after having um, having already uh, measured and marked the, the rails, having pulled those um, companionway slides off the doghouse. We were at West Marine to pick up a couple of supplies, and it was like 9.55. So making really good progress. What we're going to do is get these rails bedded, run and grab a quick bite to eat, and by the time we get back, it should be cured enough that I can at least set the um, bronze strips on and the hatch which I really want to get done before I head out of town this week. So with the rails all sanded and the surface prepared, it's now time to wipe everything down with acetone and make sure there's no oil or remnants on any of these pieces of wood so we get good adhesion. So we dry fit each rail just so that we knew where to run the, uh, the tape lines. And let's, we'll go ahead and lift the rails off of there and that'll leave the spot right where That'll leave the spot where we'll actually put down the sealant. So we'll put the 4200 right between the tape lines and on the bottom of the rail. And then we will um, seat it down on there and we have a couple of four inch long screws that we'll use to hold it in place while it cures. And the tape will allow us to peel it up nice and neat. We're just using a standard caulk gun and 3M4200 sealant. We put a thick bead of it down along the bottom of the um, doghouse itself and another bead on the, top, on the bottom side of the rail. When we put the rail in place, we put it down very carefully to avoid any movement back and forth and thinning out or leaving gaps for where the adhesion should be. And once that's in place, it's just a matter now of screwing the rail down to the doghouse so that it can uh, ultimately seal. So now that we went ahead and did that side of the rail, it was time to just repeat the entire process on the starboard side. We put new bedding material down, we put the rail down, we screwed it down. We learned a little bit on this though. I put the tape down initially with the thought that as I pulled the tape up, it would make a nice smooth line. Um, however, I didn't wait long enough. And what happened was the, the, the caulk, the sealant was still wet. And when I pulled it up, it smeared some of it up the sides of the rail. I ended up having to scrape that off of there um, where it, where it kind of came up onto the teak itself. So we learned a little bit. On the second one, we put the caulk down and we let it skin up a little bit before we tried to remove the tape. Honestly, uh, if I had to do all this over again, I probably would put the tape down only as a way to keep any spillage from coming off. I would pull it out right away at an angle that didn't allow it to get on the wood. And then I would let everything dry and come back the next day and run an additional bead of caulk around the outside to seal it in and give it a nice surface that goes from the vertical to the horizontal and fill that in. In this case, I'm going to take a razor blade, cut that whole thing smooth anywhere it oozed out, and then I'm going to put another bead on top of it anyway. The good news is 4200 adheres to itself, unlike silicone that doesn't adhere to silicone. So that's the good news. It's sort of fixable, if you will. So timing worked out really well. We knew we needed to let this sealant uh, dry a little bit more before we wanted to put the weight of the actual companionway hatch back on. So the girls came down and met us. We went to lunch. It was a really nice time. We then came back and were able to finish the work. Faster so it waves like antenna. <laughs> 
Well, with lunch out of the way, we went ahead and came back and we put the uh, the companionway hatch back on and we slid those brass um, locking mechanisms back underneath the hatch and then we ran screws through them all. The good news is it went on really easy. Uh, you know, we didn't have any problems. It slides really nice. The downside is I forgot to turn the camera on, so I didn't get any video of that, but it's essentially what you saw us do taking them off in reverse order. <laughs> So we've got the doghouse companionway here and we went ahead and fared this. We actually epoxied right here where this skin attaches to the structure. Once that was epoxy, we went ahead and put a fairing compound on it so we can sand that smooth and prep this whole thing for paint. This also will be getting painted just like the coach house roof. Hey Todd, my intention today was to work on these rails and I figured I would run into something very similar that you did. A lot, I've happened a lot of other places on the boat and I was going to say, look, see buddy, I feel your pain. I'm getting the same thing. I hate to admit it, these came off really easy today. Now, you may look at that as positive, but that thing's been leaking for years, and now I know why. There wasn't anything good bedding it. Two screws in each rail. That's all that held it together. Not a good solution. So I actually am envious of your unbelievably difficult-to-remove butterfly hatch, because I think you likely won't end up with a gaping hole in your boat if you ever have a knockdown or a heavy wind, and it means the thing was built right when somebody did a repair in the past. So good luck, Todd. I love watching your channel. I'll put a link uh, right up here for it and uh you know certainly do enjoy it thanks are you excited about getting the boat yeah. back soon did you miss it yep and it's beautiful but unfortunately i have to go out of town this week for work and in order to get to my meeting i need a monday in boston i've got to leave on sunday so early in the morning i'm catching a flight as a matter of fact i'm getting up at 3:50, and my flight leaves actually at 5:20. so it's going to be an early morning the good news with that, though, is I get to Boston early on Sunday, and I'm thinking about going and doing something kind of cool. I went online and I looked. I thought, oh, I'll go out and do one of the like Boston Harbor tall ship sails. Um, not that time of year yet. Still too cold there. So then I noticed that there was a cool Civil War fort on an island out there. I thought, oh, that'll be fun. I'll check that out. Also, not open yet. Um, but... I do think I'm going to go over to the Charleston Navy Shipyard and go visit the USS Constitution. It's been a lot of years since I've done that. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's open and the weather's nice when I get up there tomorrow and I'll kind of check all that out. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please do us a favor, give it a like and a thumbs up. Go ahead and share it with your friends on social media or any forums you're part of. Thanks a bunch and we'll see you all next week.